I just want to apologise for my light, it's not very good. Um, today I'm going to go on to the last two air fairies and then it'll just be a few interesting spells and rituals you can do. And these these are not your typical fairies, these are like more spiritual, um, more of the spirit really. Um, so, but they are, their aspect is linked into the air fairies and the elemental of air, the element of air. So they, these are quite relevant as well. So I will go into them now. And the first one is the griffin. So if you bear with me, I'm looking down at my notes and I will read it to you. Now, the griffin is a fantastical creature of the, air, the fairy realm, which comes mainly from the Middle East. It is... It is any fairy that is part mammal and part bird, though it is usually part lion and part eagle. The hippogriff in the Harry Potter stories is a griffin, and this creature is very touchy and rather aggressive. While in most fairies, the griffin does not tolerate bad manners, but unlike many, it is built to retaliate fairies and their endeavours need when they need protection. And the griffin's function is to repel intruders and avenge hurt. It is a gentle guardian but is quite ruthless in pursuit of revenge. Often the griffin's actions will appear as natural phenomena such as storms. Because the griffin is half animal and half bird, it symbolises the union of the matter and spirit. It is ever watchful, ever just rarely forgiving. The Asherans believed that the angel of death was a griffin. This fairy creature is formed from its acute hearing. It's famed for its acute hearing and its gift to those it approaches. It is the ability to hear what others are truly saying, as opposed to the mere words which often mislead. If you feel a griffin has drawn close to you, this is a time of great power. Look for lightning in the sky and a special mighty feather to indicate its passage. So that is the griffin. Nextly, I want to talk about the Sphinx. Now, people are probably going, oh, the Sphinx, the Sphinx, that's not an air fairy. Like I say, these are all just connections. So. Another composite fairy, the Sphinx, embodies mystery to the Greeks. It had a woman's head and the body of a winged lion. While the Egyptian Sphinx had a male head or that of a, a ram or hawk, linking it to the griffin. The composite nature of the Sphinx indicates the deep knowledge that comes from a union of spirit, instinct and intellect. In myth, this being is often encouraged as a guardian to the ancient mysteries to test the worthiness of anyone who approached. The Sphinx would demand the passing of some test or solution of a riddle um, to fail at its usual result in death, frequently being the devoured by um, the vengeful sphinx. So basically, that's why it's saying if um, if you fail the test, you'd be devoured by the sphinx. The symbolism behind this relates to understanding and the use of knowledge, partly knowledge. When sorry guys, my, my dyslexia is not helping me at the moment. Ungodly applied can lead to being devoured by the consequences of ignorance. This applies today where scientific knowledge is used without regard to spiritual meaning. If you are faced with many um, conundrums in life, suspect the involvement of the Sphinx. Do not panic. It may be call. It may be a call to further educate or mental expansion. The Sphinx is the carrier of prophecy, 
and is there to challenge and inspire. So, what I want to say is I want to apologise again for me reading. Um, I do struggle sometimes and it's a nightmare. Um, wish I could do better with that, but sadly I can't. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will be going on to videos about finding the air fairies. Uh, the air fairies at home and then air fairies in the wind. And then I've got a few spells for you. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video and bless it be everybody.